is cleared for takeoff. All right, we're live. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hello, everyone joining us here Wednesday morning. Uh, we have three lovely guests, one you've seen before and two brand new. Uh, this is very exciting for us. This is our very first SDK Q&A. Uh, we thought it would be really important and interesting to do this type of stream. So we, we hope everyone gets something out of it and is also prepared with some questions. Um, I'd love to introduce everyone here. Uh, first of all, I'm Jane. I'm a community manager here at Microsoft Flight Simulator. And we'll go ahead and have everyone introduce who they are, starting with the left, who you've probably seen before, York. Hi, everyone. Super excited to be here. I'm York. Uh, I'm the head of Flight Sim. Yes. And in the middle, new face, we have Alize Arfel. Yes, hello everybody. Um, I'm Alizé, I'm the new uh, producer uh, for the SDK and I joined the team uh, in January, so four months ago. Awesome, glad to have you. Last but not least, we have Eric. Yeah, hi, so I'm Eric. I'm a lead SDK developer on Microsoft Flight Simulator and I joined the team nearly two years ago. Awesome. And yes, we're already getting comments. They, they are in the same room, <laughs> hence the yeah. masks. Um, yeah, <laughs> no problems there. Yeah. And, you know, if anyone, maybe if, if the mask is too much, or if you can't hear something, just ask us to repeat it. We'll be sure to, to speak as clearly as we can, obviously, so everyone can hear and participate. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. I think I'll, I'll start this off by passing it to you, Jorg. I know you have a few things you want to say first before you kick this off. Well, <clears throat> I say this a lot when, when we have community streams, which I love, by the way. And I, it's thank you. Um, and uh, for those of you, I think a lot of you probably are developers. Uh, it's it is really making our life so exciting that you are there, and it's it's been amazing to see the output. Um, I look every day <laughs> what you make. I I download or buy just about everything that has ever been created, and I check it out, and it's just just awesome stuff. So it's a it's an it's a real honor and privilege that we are that we are a platform that you develop for. So so thank you very much. Um, this community chats is actually one of my highlights of of any of my weeks whenever we have them. And what I really love about them is I feel like they're really open and transparent, and that we can just have a chat. And hopefully we can carry that from our typical community chat into this one. And there are some questions that I think Jane, Jane has already collected and then there's already, already gonna be a, a live Q&A. This particular one today, um, you know, we are making progress on Xbox. Um, so we, there's some questions that we hear from people. And so we, we, we themed this, hey, if you have any questions about Xbox, this would be a good time to ask them and Eric and Alize can answer just about everything. Um, but there's also other things. We know there's lots of things that have, have something to do with the with the SDK. So let's just let's just talk. Anyways, that was that was it for my intro. <laughs> nice, thanks, York. And yes, obviously we want today to be focused on the SDK. Um, so we do ask that questions are related to that. I'm sure there's a lot more other questions outside the SDK, but we'll do our best to kind of focus in on that. Um, so to get started, Elise, I know you have something. Uh, to present you wanted to talk about first. So I'll go yeah. ahead and bring up the uh, PowerPoint here. Okay, thanks. Yeah, um, I prepared a, a PowerPoint because I wanted to let you know um, more about the SDK, about how we work. So um, uh, first of all, welcome and thank you very much for attending this, uh, this session. We are very excited to meet you today for this first um, SDK Q&A session. Hopefully it won't be the last. Um, I think we will do more <laughs> regularly because um, you know today we decided to focus on Xbox, but maybe tomorrow we'll talk about aircraft, airports. The SDK is big, so we have so much to, to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, you know that the Xbox version is coming this summer, so um, it's a big opportunity for content creators and we are going to do our best to, to help you get your content ready for this new platform. Um, we have to mention uh, the new documentation website. I think you saw that before, but um, we have this brand new documentation website, which is live. You can find it on docs.flightsimulator.com. Um, it keeps on being improved every day. We have a tech writer who is working on that. Um, on the question that you asked, you, some of you guys wanted more documentation on specific topics. 
Um, this is every um, every of these questions are now in the writer's backlog. So we won't answer those questions today, but you can make sure that we will um, add details about that on the documentation. We will do it and it's on the backlog already. Um, also, we have a big announcement uh, about the um, about the way we help you with your questions. Uh, today, uh, you have a forum, a private uh, private section on the forum, and we believe we could do better about that. So we have decided to archive this private section of the forum, and we replace it by a question and answers platform. So we have chosen Answer Hub, the platform that is used by Unreal, for example. Um, we have decided to, to create a platform here to help you uh, get answers to your question. You will be able to ask your questions to see if they've been asked before, maybe to answer somebody's question if you, if you know how to help. And um, we will have our new tech QA uh, guy monitoring this platform every day. So he will bring you a support on the questions because we, I believe we have to apologize here um, we have a long answer delay when we answer, um, it's very complicated for us to, to track every of your questions and to find answers. So you have to believe that we are doing our best to, to improve that and to improve the, the support that we bring to the community. And is there's a question that I think is worth even yeah, sure. on. Um, is this new platform also available for freeware developers? I think it's open to, to everybody, actually. Everybody will, will be able to, to come to the platform to ask their questions and to see if someone already had the same problem and to see how they sort it out. It's open for everybody, just like the documentation platform. That's yeah. awesome. So since right now the, the third party section is private on forums, it'll, it'll move to this public space. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Fantastic. Yes, the, um, the, the forum will be archived and uh, you have to ask your questions on the new platform from now on. But you have to check first on the documentation if the <laughs> answer is not already written here, you know. Um, okay. Um, about the documentation, while we are on it, we have a new Xbox page on the documentation, which you can already visit. Uh, this is where we gather all the Xbox related information. Um, basically, today we have advice on how to optimize the memory usage, um, how to improve the, um, your airports to make them fit in, a, in, a, in an Xbox. Um, we advise you to check this web page uh, regularly because we keep on improving it. We will very soon add a video, for example, of our lead artist. He will give you advice on how to prepare your airport and how to optimize your airports. So stay tuned. Um, like we said before, and like we like to say, the SDK is big, but the team is not. Uh, today, we are actually eight people working uh, full time on the SDK. And among those eight people, we have five new, new person, actually, who arrived in the past month. Uh, we have one producer, that should be me. We have one tech writer, like I mentioned before, he is completely dedicated to improving the documentation. And he does that really, really well. Uh, we had one tech QA who arrived a few weeks ago. Um, so this guy will be in charge of the support, like I said, on the Q&A platform. You will probably be in touch with him very often. Um, and he's also in charge of, you know, checking the dev mode and making sure that we reach the, the quality that we, that we aim at. And we also have three software developers coming. Uh, one is coming soon, I think in May. Yeah. And um, this will help us work more, for example, on the SimConnect and the WebAssembly questions. Um, because uh, lately we, we just didn't have the resources to do that. So that brings the team to eight, eight people. And we also have he Eric here, who recently became the lead engine programmer. So. Lead engine programmer and lead SDK developer. And lead SDK developer, so. So, yeah. Yeah, that's it. <clears throat> um, another point, we will uh, focus on the development of the new features on the SIM updates from now on. 
we use to, to provide you with new features on world updates and on sim updates. Um, and we believe there is a better way to do that. So we are going to only push new features on every sim update, but uh, we wish to improve the beta program um, so that you can get builds early and help us, um, I mean, control that everything is, uh, is fine and that your content is working properly. So I don't know, Jorg, if you want to, to comment that. Yeah, I mean, I think like, I think there's, you know, some people always think, and I tried to explain it last time, that there's sim updates and world updates and there's other things we're doing, obviously. And, and the world updates, it's a very separate effort from the sim itself. And, and sometimes we blend it a little and sometimes we put some code into the world update that ends up not being thoroughly tested enough. And I think many of you, almost everybody has suffered from that. So I think we're gonna be more disciplined about it. That's basically the thing. Yeah. Uh, so we're putting code out with SIM updates, which is where they belong. And there's gonna be a significantly longer testing period where, where yeah. everybody can make basically make sure that what once it comes out to the greater, to the greater audience, it all works, all the add-ons work. So I think this is a net net win for everybody involved. So that's the whole that's the whole goal, obviously. Yeah, indeed. So um, what we plan to work on next is first the visual effects editor. I know you've been waiting for it, and we've been working for it for quite a long time. Uh, it's almost ready. I know we we said that a lot, but this time it's true. It's coming on the next update, mm -hmm. so you will be able to create your own visual effects. We even prepared um, a video tutorial to help you get started with that. Um, next, I would like us to work uh, to improve the scenery editor uh, because it's very, very used. It's a tool that you, many, many people use every day and it needs to be improved, um, including the exclusions that you asked on the, on the questions. We are going to work on that. When I say very soon, it's like for, for summer, I think we'll start. And uh, like I mentioned, we have this new guy uh, joining the team next month, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to, to task him on SimConnect and on WebAssembly related stuff. So um, we know that you have lots of uh, requests about SimConnect, mm -hmm. about WebAssembly. So um, we will soon be able to, to provide the answers on this topic. And I think that's it. That's it for that's it for my, my PowerPoint. Okay. I just have a nice picture at the end, but otherwise I'm, I'm done. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Thanks, Elise. Um, so with, with all that in mind, you know, we went into the forums a couple weeks ago and we gathered some questions uh, from some of our modders and creators. Um, you know, we wanted them to be, we have some Xbox themed ones here that we're going to start with and then probably get into some other ones. But um, one of the first questions that was asked regarding Xbox, uh, is considering the Xbox version of the sim will run on DX12, which kind of issues should we be aware of in relationship to resource usage? Okay, so that's probably a question more for me. Um, well, you shouldn't expect any specific issue when we switch to DX12. Um, really, everything, everything that is resource related is uh, handled by the engine. Uh, so we will uh, hide the tricky part from you. So for you, it shouldn't change anything. Um, the X12 won't change anything, be it for the Xbox or later on for the PC. Um, I think this goes slightly deeper. Uh, I think what people wonder is uh, how they're going to, I mean, how they're going to fit their add-on uh, into the Xbox, because obviously mm -hmm. a lot of simmers these days are using uh, beefy PCs with lots of RAM, lots of disk mm -hmm. space and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, those resources are a bit uh, more limited uh, on a console. Um, so what we're doing here is we are making sure that um, when the, the console cannot load any more uh, things, more objects, uh, more textures or anything, um, where well, we prevent it from loading uh, those things. So an add-on that is really huge and uh, that really on the PC takes uh, gigs and gigs of RAM um, will automatically be not scaled, scaled down, but perhaps a bit cut uh, on the console if you reach the upper limit of, uh, of anything like uh, RAM uh, or things like that. Um, so of course, uh, people won't 
like the idea of those add-ons being uh, cut like that. So they'll ask us, uh, how can we design our, um, our add-ons so that they fit uh, on Xbox? So um, what we are doing right now, we have a f uh, several people working on a profiling tool that will be included in the PC version mm -hmm. and that will allow you to know a lot more about the footprint of your add-on. And with that in mind, uh, and the guidelines we'll put on the documentation that uh, Alize mentioned before, uh, you'll be able to, to, to design your add-on so that it fits fine on an Xbox. So that's the idea. Uh, the thing is that, as you know, um, CMLs usually use dozens of add-ons uh, at the same time. So then there's this question of, but if I want to run uh, yeah, 10, 20 add-ons on my Xbox, will it fit? So that's where the first part of what I said uh, kicks in, which means that uh, if there's not enough RAM or, or, or yeah, not enough RAM, main, it's mainly not enough RAM, mm -hmm. uh, then the, the console will warn you and will uh, will stop loading additional stuff. So that's the kind of tool we're going to offer to people. But uh, regarding the X12, really, it's pure engine thing, and so it, it will really be hidden from uh, from the third party developers. Okay. And with that said, will will products that won't have any chance to run run on the Xbox for some reason, either if it's you know too high detail, too high textures, uh, memory requirements high, um, will that be allowed to be sold on the marketplace, and will it be labeled as Windows only? Yep. That's the plan. I mean, we are not going to force anybody to do anything. Like mm -hmm. we are, I mean, we're for, we're first party, right? So we we will do, we will present everything that Sobo makes or other partners make on all platforms where we launch, but it's a free, it's a free world. <laughs> you can opt in. Um, I mean, I personally think the opportunity for flight simming in general is, is probably unprecedented because flight simming has never been on consoles and we know there's hundreds of millions of people on consoles. So we'll see, hopefully we can convert many of them to become simmers and to join the hobby. We don't know, but yeah, it's completely opt in. So, Hopefully, hopefully you opt in because I think it's going to be a good experience, and I think it's the newcomers that come through Xbox. I think will enjoy all your work, but yeah, it's optional. Yeah, you can already see it in the project editor. You have a new um, kind of picture. You can flag if the content you're preparing is going to be sell on Xbox, on PC, or both. Um, it's up to you. Just uh, so you know. All the content created by Asobo goes to PC and Xbox. We, we don't separate things. All of our content goes to Xbox as well, yeah. as well as PC. Mm -hmm. We don't make a difference. Um, this being said, we really believe that this, um, this Xbox version is going to be a big opportunity for, for you content creators because um, we have so many people who just won't buy a very powerful PC because they, they don't feel like it, because they don't want to. Um, but these people, they will still buy Flight Simulator, and I think it's a new player, a new type of player, and they will probably be interested in, in your content, in what you have to offer. So um, they will probably turn into simmers when they discover the, the sim, because it's going to be awesome, even on Xbox. So we we just encourage you, you know, to to adapt your content for the Xbox and maybe to, to start creating stuff for the Xbox as well. Yeah, and I mean, chances are that uh, your content, as it's been, it, it really depends on the kind of content you're making, but uh, but but some aircraft as they are already run on Xbox. Yeah. So, I mean, third party aircraft, because we can test some of them, of course, mm -hmm. when when compiling the Xbox. So so really perhaps you won't even have to do something, but, but keep in mind that if you need to adapt, uh, you will try to offer the tools that allow you to do yeah. that. We'll have uh, as much as we can. Awesome. So which X Xbox versions are being supported? Oh, that's me. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, <laughs> we uh, look, we announced that we're launching on uh, Xbox Series X and S um, this summer. That that stays consistent. The team has made awesome. I, I cannot wait for everybody to play this version because the optimization that has been done and it's basically invisible to the eye. You can't really tell. It's awesome, it really is. And then I've always been very consistent that we will try uh, to get on the the Xbox One generation, which we call generation eight. Um, and and that is work that's in progress. I can't really say anything about it yet, frankly, because we don't know 100% yet, but the desire is there. 
Um, and I think philosophically on the Microsoft side, Gen 8 and Gen 9 are in many ways interoperable. So uh, you should be able to play it. We just need to work, make it work. <laughs> but the focus for now, for this summer, is to make it work on the on the on the shiny new Xboxes that came out last year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so for newer and less established third-party devs, what support do you intend to give them to get their project up and running on Xbox? Well, like we mentioned before, we have um, we are preparing samples of optimized and non-optimized airports, so you can see the difference and adapt your content. Uh, we have the guidelines. We will do a video, an interview of the lead artist to help you get prepared. Uh, this is all available in the dedicated section in the documentation, so you can already check it out. Uh, and like Eric mentioned, we also have the memory profiling mm -hmm. tools. Um, which will help you determine which uh, which component of your scenery takes so many 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 memory, mm. uh, many or much? much I don't know so much memory sorry <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and optimize and work on that specifically so I think we're, yeah we can I we can answer that one question that. that just came in uh, so is there mouse and keyboard support on Xbox yes there is on Gen nine mouse yeah. and keyboard are fully supported it's not that well known. Maybe, but, but it's also because there weren't any sims, but it yeah. totally works. So if, like what I have downstairs, I have my Xbox set up exactly like that. I have a joystick from Thrustmasters, I have mouse keyboard there and my gigantic television and I totally love it. <laughs> so it's it's very, it's very, very similar in the simming. Like the, we don't have pedals yet and stuff like that, but it's it's otherwise pretty damn good. So I, I, I think you should all be looking forward to it. I know many of you are probably PC hardcore and so is I for the forever and ever, but um, I think the Xbox version is going to delight people. Yeah. Uh, I did see one question up there. Maybe you guys can answer this. Um, I see it a lot in community. Do you know, will, will there be a SIM Connect local broadcast for the Xbox install so people can access um, third party tools like Volanta or Flight Events or SIM Toolkit Pro so they can hook into stuff like that? Uh, right now, the, I mean, we're still working on that. I don't think it's really been decided. Uh, I can't really say for now. Uh, but connecting from your, I guess the uh, what what people mean is that there are some add-ons that are actually uh, exec Windows executables and that connect to the SIM on the PC. Mm -hmm. And I think the question uh, that I've read as well is, uh, will we be able to connect from our Windows executable? to the Xbox version uh, on our local network. Right now, I don't think it works. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure what the status is on that. Uh, I'm not sure if we'll allow it or not. I can't say mm. for OK. Um, and going into more the scenery editor, I see some questions on that. Um, can a Sobo provide airport scenery developers something in the SDK where they can exclude the AI regular passenger vehicles from the airport, like power poles and lights, stuff like that? Yes, we had that a lot. So uh, we already intended to, to create some, I mean, to improve the exclusion system. So yes, that's definitely something that uh, that was required internally as well because we use our own tools. So we have the artists, they ask for that as well. So it's already on the roadmap for this year because we, we wish to work more on the, on the scenery editor. Um, so when the new Q&A platform goes live, uh, feel free to, you know, to ask more specifically what you want to exclude from the sceneries. Uh, this way, we'll make sure that we don't forget uh, something that you might need, mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah, well, actually, it's really an ongoing discussion we have at the studio because uh, yeah, we, we face the same uh, question from yeah. uh, from our people, from our artists who are doing things, and so they, they've asked us for that. Mm -hmm. um, I, actually, I talked about it today with uh, one of my colleagues, so we, we, we are looking at how we can do it. Uh, there are various options, so it will be done. Mm -hmm. There's no ETA yet. Uh, yeah. But yes, mm -hmm. it's it's something that will bring, of course. It's a promise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we said no promises. Sorry, but we will do it. <laughs> Fair. Um, great question from Heli Simmer here, probably for for you, Jorg. Um, are we planning on expanding the developer channel to work more closely with the teams to make sure their products will work properly before updates hit the market? That's Sergio. Hi, Sergio. Um, ah. uh, yes, that's the exact. I mean, maybe you missed it at the beginning. We are. 
we're going to focus code updates uh, basically on the sim updates. So we'll have more time. There's basically, by and large, two months, sometimes a little bit more in between. So we'll actually have appropriate time. Mm -hmm. If you see what's going on right now, we do an update every month. And there's code in every month. And if you really think about the branching system, how it works, we, we got like a few days, maybe a week. And that just doesn't give anybody enough time. So it's too frantic. And I, I think Asobo feels that. And, and third-party developers feel that. The whole goal is that everybody who's a third-party developer can get into the beta and make sure that everything works. So mm -hmm. that's that's the whole point. Yeah. Uh, so what about supporting Blender exporter? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we are not using Blender in-house right now. Um, some of our artists have uh, asked for that, uh, strongly asked for that. Mm -hmm. So they are big fans of Blender. Um, so I don't know if we will provide uh, our own official Blender exporter. We know that there are third parties who have already worked on that. We know at least two very good of them. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so it's a question of, do we offer an official one? Do we help them completing theirs? Um, we don't know. So um, we don't know if we we'll include that directly uh, into the SDK or if we should provide all the necessary information for people to make a full-fledged uh, mm -hmm. Blender exporter. So mm -hmm. that will happen. Uh, actually, we're in contact with uh, some of them. So, so yes, that's uh, mm -hmm. yeah. We we don't know if we'll support it directly, but there will be a better support for Blender. Yeah, I wouldn't make no promise here. Yeah, but yeah, we we're, we're talking about. But it. We heard a lot. How about that? And I mean, that's why we're having these conversations, right? To be right. to be listening, to be open. Right. And it's just saw a question. One for Blender. <laughs> <laughs> they, they know. I, I keep bringing this up too. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Uh, this question is probably for you, Lucy, from chat. What What's the best way to make a suggestion or feature request to the SDK team? Um, I think until we have something better, the Q&A platform will be the answer for that. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to, to regroup uh, every information in one place because we, we used to receive private messages on the forum. We also have topics on the forum. Sometimes we had emails and we, we want to, to, to stop having these different channels and, um, and to use the Q&A platform in priority. So I mm -hmm. think that would be the, the best place to, to post a request. Uh, we will tag them as requests and people will be able to vote to let us know if it's important for them as well. Okay. And that will give some weight to, to, to the requests. So yeah, I think the, the Q&A platform should be the best place. Okay. And you mentioned that. it'll be Answer Hub. Do, do, we, do we know yeah. when that's coming out? Yeah, uh, I think the launch is for May the 3rd. It should be live on May the 3rd, but we will keep you posted about that. Okay. And awesome. uh, until uh, until then, you can always uh, uh, write your request uh, in the third party yeah. forum. Yeah, we, we keep until reading. Until it's archived, we, we keep reading it. Yeah. I mean, I read it every day, my colleagues too, and uh, yeah. and uh, we try to answer. So as Alize said, yeah, it's uh, it takes it takes some time, but yeah. Uh, yeah. And we are really sorry about that, but we we try. Yeah. But it, it's going to be better, I think, with the answer hub. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, me too. So another uh, frequently asked question, are there any plans to enable multi-threading support with Wasm? Oh. Do you want to answer? Oh, just <laughs> my, my favorite answer. It's on the roadmap already. So uh -huh. yeah, we, we know well, about that. No, actually, just to be a bit more technical. Um, <laughs> yeah, the problem with um, with Wasm is that, so it's WebAssembly for, for those, that, well, I guess everybody knows about that if you're attending this, uh, this session, but um, uh, WebAssembly doesn't have anything that allows you to create threads from within your module. Um, uh, even WASI, the WebAssembly uh, system interface, doesn't have anything to do that. So we need to come up with our own solution for this. Uh, we've worked on we've worked on the, on it already. We are still working on it. it. It's not an easy task, but yes, that's planned. As, uh, as Alize said, uh, no ETA either. Um, we hope that uh, this new this new recruit that will have on uh, in that will arrive in May uh, will help us uh, accelerating the thing on that. And uh, and so yeah, we that's that's planned. You'll get that, and uh, but we can't tell you exactly when. Hopefully this mm. year. Yeah, hopefully this year. Still, not a promise, but we we'll, we'll try to do it this year. Yes. Yeah, 
And uh, this isn't a question, just a comment from, from Two Tone Murphy. He says, an issue in the gaming sphere is that most studios port a console version over to PC. This is the opposite. I think PC users know no, to max everything out, PC is the way, but having a console version that will be optimized will be awesome. It'll bring so many new people to our hobby and make it so accessible. Thanks for that yeah. comment, Murph. <laughs> uh, yeah, I yeah, think I we think definitely agree. Actually, actually, it's something something that came to my mind uh, when Jorg uh, mentioned uh, all the, optimiz the optimizations that were done by uh, other teams at Azobo regarding the, the Xbox version. I mean, it's it's not really the call to talk about this. It's probably the, uh, the, the, the general one, but... Uh, but all those optimizations made for Xbox will benefit the PC version as well. Yeah, sure. So, yeah. This is, by the way, a build we're intending to flight. Like this is one that needs okay. flighting because there was a lot of code changes. So we'll we'll talk about it. We don't have an exact date yet, but a lot of people that say, "Hey, is there going to be an Xbox flight?" Da 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 da. Well. It, it is a good question if that Xbox flight is going to be on PC first, because that that branch is what's important, the, mm -hmm. the actual code that was written. Mm -hmm. So, but we'll, we'll get into this more. Um, yep. Okay. There were some other questions, Jane. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm sometimes worried that we're missing some of these questions. So maybe mine will. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I did, I did see one here, such as, uh, is there a new workaround to implement custom objects into Microsoft Flight Simulators? A new workaround. It really it says, depends on what, what kind of custom objects we're referring to. But uh, sure, if you can expand expand on that, Christine Broom, we'll get that to that question soon. Um, but another question I see here is: uh, Will there be profiling tools similar to X-Plane profiling tool that could help third-party creators to troubleshoot performance issues? Um, well, there are two answers to that. Uh, okay. One is the memory profiling tool we mentioned just before when we said uh, it will allow people to adapt their Xbox content, uh, mm -hmm. well, their content to Xbox, sorry. Um, that can also be used to monitor uh, what's taking memory uh, yeah, on the PC. PC. Mm -hmm. um, another topic might be uh, WASM modules, actually. It's true that we don't have direct timing of them right now. So perhaps we should ask, add something about it. Uh, it's not planned yet. We can think about it. Um, there's also uh, the, the JavaScript side of things for those who are doing HTML instruments, even if that's not documented enough yet. And, and, and of course, that's planned. But um, so one thing is that we'll ship uh, the coherent debugger, which will allow you to connect to your uh, HTML instruments and uh, debug them as if you were debugging any website uh, with any browser. Mm. So you will have access to that. And there are some profiling elements in there that you can use as well. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of things we're thinking of and that we'll bring to you in the future. In okay. a close future. Well, yeah, the, the current debugger, it's in the very, cl very close future. Mm -hmm. Can I pick a question that I saw a while ago? It's sort of scrolled by already. Yeah. But it's, it's kind of, a, I think it's an important one. Somebody was asking, hey, all the add-ons that are already bought on the PC, are they going to show up on Xbox? And I think that's a completely fair question. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Eric, if you want to answer this, at least. Uh, if they, you, you mean if they will show, you mean yeah. if they will appear in the store or if they will be owned by the person who has already bought it on PC? I think the question was the latter. It's, I think it's both, obviously. Otherwise, you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to get it if it's not in the store. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, to be honest, I've, well, it, it's more question for the marketplace side I of. Think so, yeah. uh, so I, I, I'm not 100 percent sure. I believe the plan is. I mean, first off, a third party like yourselves need to go uh, opt in. But we we are giving what we call entitlements. When you buy something somewhere, you get it on both. So mm -hmm. I don't think you can charge people twice. And I, don't, I personally don't think that would be right either. So if somebody basically plays, because frankly, when you go, when you own Flight Sim on PC right now, you will own it on Xbox. You don't have to buy it again. Like that, that's, that's not how this works. And the same is true for add-ons. But I'll, I'll pick this one. I'll double check with the business team on this. But um, mm -hmm. I believe that's the case. Mm -hmm. I mean, technically, it depends if you, well, if, if you have two separate uh, add-ons because there's one dedicated to PC, one dedicated to Xbox, you know, as we explained earlier on, mm -hmm. they may have different entitlements, but I'm sure we can find something. If the idea is that uh, you buy it once and you use it on both platforms, there must be ways to do it. So. Mm -hmm. um, I think once we get um, an answer on that, we will add it on the Xbox documentation page mm -hmm. so that it's clear for, for people. 
Yeah, yeah. I think to answer that question that just came in, even for Steam users, I don't think that's right. Like I, so I think Steam is separate. It's a completely separate package. We can like, so Microsoft can only basically do it, this, this what we call um, this roaming entitlement. We can only do it on the platforms we own. Like, so this basically the Windows, Windows 10, Windows Store, and then Xbox. And then future probably X Cloud if it, once we get there. Um, but Steam is separate, so no, it doesn't work with Steam. Yeah. A yeah. uh, more general question: Do we know if you know once it's out on Xbox, will updates run with the PC and Xbox at the same time, or that will they be independent of each other? Uh, I mean, as far as we're concerned, that will be that should be the same code base. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean that the deployment will be simultaneous between the two platforms. I guess it's, it it will be to be. It will have to be decided. It's not really SDK related, but <laughs> I, I think it, it will have to be decided yeah. okay. between uh, between Microsoft and uh, the publishing team at Azure. Mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, so, is there a roadmap for improvement plans for coherent GT engine? Uh, yes. Um, well, the, the first thing is uh, what we what we mentioned just before. Uh, bringing the coherent debugger to everyone uh, so that we, I mean, everyone can find the, the, the issues uh, within their add-ons within coherent. Um, then what we're working on right now on a more, it's a, at a more internal level, uh, we are looking at how uh, garbage collection is performed in JavaScript in coherent. Um, we're talking to coherent about it and we are looking at that ourselves. So yes, there are plans to improve things. Yeah. There are even plans to, <clears throat> to change the way with instruments and things like that. I mean, it, it would be very technical, but there are lots of things we're looking at that should improve mm -hmm. uh, the performance of the, the HTML instruments. Mm -hmm. We don't have a clear roadmap on when these improvements will be available. But we mm -hmm. just know that the current oh. developer part is going, it's coming soon. But for the rest, we, we can't say exactly when it will arrive. We just work on it. Actually, yeah. it's it's not directly so it's current, so it's used by the SDK, mm -hmm. uh, but it's more the engine team which we're part of as well. But it's more the engine team that focuses on that kind of thing. The, yeah. the SDK team is really focused on the building the SDK and the tools and everything, mm -hmm. and that part, that specific part, is slightly more uh, engine uh, directed. Yeah. Yeah, and Cybernetic is asking where you can see the roadmap. Uh, I believe that's our SDK roadmap that we put on our dev updates once in a while. Yeah. You can mm -hmm. find there. Every time we have an update to it, we usually release it in those Thursday dev updates. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so some comments here. Can we talk about DLLs? Uh -huh. <laughs> OK. So I guess. I guess the idea is why why do you why do you use WebAssembly and why don't we have access to our good old DLLs? Mm -hmm. um, well, the main reason for that, the very first reason for that, is security. Uh, when you ship a DLL, uh, you never know it. You never know exactly what it's going to access, uh, what it's going to do. I mean, we've seen things uh, deployed as DLLs and being uh, questionable. Uh, the thing is that Wasm is sandboxed. So when we, when when Microsoft sells uh, add-ons through its marketplace, its store, uh, it wants to ensure that uh, what it sells is uh, safe for yeah. its customers. And with its sandboxing, uh, Wasm allows that really. Uh, it's also a good way to port uh, legacy applications or legacy add-ons that were developed in C++. Mm -hmm. uh, I know some people are using Rust to develop uh, flight sim add-ons. Uh, you can do that as well. The nice thing is that Wasm is a target that you can use with a lot of different source languages. So that's that's interesting as well. But but for those people who had a lot of legacy code base and they wanted to still benefit from it uh, on a flight simulator, Microsoft Flight Simulator, Wasm was a, a natural way of doing things. So we know there are some shortcomings. Uh, such as no direct access to the GPU, or uh, when it's, it can be tricky to use a third, when you relied on uh, other third party DLLs, you cannot use them anymore, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, these are things we're still working on. So uh, we, we are trying to improve the platform. We believe 
some people have demonstrated that uh, Wasm is a perfectly viable solution, even if uh, at first perhaps there were doubts about it. Um, there are still things to do, but we're working on that and, uh, and we hope to improve uh, what you can do with, uh, with the platform. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, speaking of WASM, so in the last world update, the WASM was also updated and it it resulted in long loading times for modules using it. Is there a plan to improve this behavior to reduce loading times for it? Um, there are several things. Um, well, yeah, we, we're trying, well, I think the the real issue for, for this call, really, um, from third part, the third party developer's point of view, the issue we found with Wasm is iteration times, which means if you have a fairly complex add-on and uh, you, you recompile it, then of course it produces one single Wasm, and this single Wasm can take a few minutes uh, to get recompiled and to a DLL and to get loaded in, in, the, in the sim. So yes, we're trying to improve on that. We have ideas to do only partial uh, Recompiling and things like this, it's not working yet. Uh, it's it's work going on. It's work in progress. Sorry. Um, so we, we we'll try to improve that. Yeah. Okay. And but I, I don't think. Oh sure. Jane, sorry. I, I'm not sure the latest update made compilation slower. So. And perhaps it was. Well, I haven't read about it, but uh, it shouldn't. Right. To be honest, we haven't changed anything in the last update regarding how. Wasm is loaded into the into the sim, but uh, but yeah, but we never know. But uh, I don't think it's the case. Are there any plans to deliver more on the living world, such as the ability for people to add in steam or smoke or birds and animals uh, via the SDK? There's all kinds of plans for the living world, but yeah. <laughs> uh, I would I would say uh, it it hasn't popped. How about this? Like on the we we just this morning, just for what it's worth, Seb, Marcial, uh, David, and I spent two and a half hours looking at the feedback snapshot, and you'll you'll get a new version tomorrow. Jane is going to put it on the website. It's not on there, <laughs> and and we expanded the feedback snapshot to to forty eight items, right? Because we wanted to go a little bit deeper into the things that really are important. As some people know I love animals and all kinds of other stuff, and I would love nothing more than to add more things to the living world. But I think however much it pains me maybe personally i think there are some bigger fish to fry mm -hmm. maybe that's not a good thing to say but you know there are some there's some other things we need to do first before before we do this but in long term yeah we want to make this as awesome a world as you can possibly make so there's no question we'll do it it's just not this year i mean for what it's worth uh, the sdk has a, a sample uh, to show you how you can add bears to the sim, yeah. mm -hmm. so you could, uh, I mean, as a third party developer, you can, you could add uh, anything you want, any animal you want in the, in the sim. So maybe it's not documented enough or not, not well documented. We'll have to check that. I thought it was, but, uh, but yeah, so as, as third party developers, you, you can already do that in principle. Yeah. I've certainly seen some mods that add in certain animals. So definitely possible there. Yeah, it is. So can you talk about your plans to improve dev mode? Yeah, yeah it's um, it's uneasy to, to answer shortly, but um, we've talked a lot about Xbox today because the Xbox is coming soon and we want to help you get ready for this big uh, new adventure. And however, that doesn't mean we, we stopped working on the dev mode and on the SDK, like we mentioned before, we have um, new people in the team. Uh, we have uh, our own tech QA, new developers. So um, we'll try, I mean, we'll keep on uh, working on the dev mode and improving it. Mm -hmm. It takes time um, and we have to take it piece by piece because as you know, I'm going to say it one more time, but it's true, the SDK is really big. We have lots of tools, we have uh, lots of you know, different stuff and features. And when you arrive in the team, it can be huge. I mean, it was very frightening for me when I when I arrived here, but um, we'll, we'll keep on improving it. Uh, here today, we're working on the visual effects. It's a new tool for you, but tomorrow we'll improve the scenery editor, which you've been working on for a month now. 
and uh, still we have so much to do to make it even easier to to use uh, after that i don't know which i mean i know but i'm not going to to announce it today but i know what we will work on next so um, we have so many things to improve in the dev mode and uh, just because the xbox is coming doesn't mean that we we lower our efforts on the dev mode and sdk actually sdk and dev mode teams are separate uh, mm -hmm. so the fact that uh, we've been so okay we've added a checkbox in uh, in one of the tools in the project editor say yeah. hey i want to export to xbox that was easy but yeah <laughs> it's not exactly what has taken us to a very long time so mm -hmm. so we've been working on other things such as the fx editor mm -hmm. that Felice has announced other things that haven't been announced yet um also fixing stuff mm -hmm. uh, listening to your feedback and trying to to, to make things easier to use. I mean, even internally, those new people who came in that uh, Alize mentioned, uh, the first thing we ask them to do is uh, use the dev mode and tell yeah. us what you think about and uh, about mm -hmm. it. And and sometimes we get feedbacks that are like the ones we can read in the forum. So why does it work like this? Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's it's different to this tool which I'm used to and things like this. So we 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 we, we try to 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 improve all the existing tools, but we have a lot of uh, new things coming. Lots on our, yeah, on our plates. And um, we, so we have a lot to develop, of course, but we um, there is also something that we are trying to improve um, on a daily basis. It's the documentation. Uh, we've talked about it, but um, sometimes the it can be complicated to use the SDK and to properly use uh, and develop on the, on the different tools. So we are putting lots of efforts on the documentation um, we have Mark, our, our tech writer. He he's, um, he spends a lot of time to to adding uh, GIF, GIF. Mm -hmm. um, I mean animated videos to to help you really understand how to use the tool. And we are also creating video tutorials, and we will do more and more, I think, to help you uh, mm -hmm. with that because we cannot develop and improve everything today. But we can try at least today to work on documentation and to to bring you. A more efficient support. Mm -hmm. um, this being said, uh, you you can use the new Q and A platform. I mean, it's not live for now, but in in couple of weeks it will be. Uh, please use it to to send us your requests uh, very precisely, so that we know exactly what you need, um, which part you want us to improve first. Uh, I, we talked about the exclusion, for example. This is just one point. We have so many other things to to work on. So please uh, post that and t let us know what you need. Um, remember to vote for the, the request that you, you want to, us to, to work on in priority. And um, and hopefully we will improve the yeah the dev mode. Zone. So I think we should. We are, so I think this is planned for 60 minutes today, just to keep an eye on time. So we have five minutes left. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think there's a couple of questions that we should get, try to give quick answers to. So I yeah, see sure. that this, there was a question about, uh, I think, mirror textures again. So we need to go. And frankly, we have talked about even talking about this today in more detail. Remember the livery application? Has yeah. been on the SDK. I have been on the feedback snapshot for a while. Um, Eric, do you have any specific insight here or do we want to postpone this to next time? Uh, this one I'll have to check with uh, who's, who's handling it because uh, I think it's not direct. Well, although it's yeah, it's, it's SDK linked, but it, I think the issue lies within. Uh, I'll have to check. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. I don't think it's exactly uh, linked to the tools themselves. So I'll have to watch it, but I've read it. Yeah, uh, I've, I thought it was taken care of, to be honest. But uh, so mm -mm -mm. It's like no, I think people would like to do the so FSX style application yeah. where they just paint the textures and it's not really working the same anymore because it's mm -hmm. all shaders, but we should yeah. prepare for that. And then mm -hmm. another. Another question I saw multiple times was about animation support. There it is. Mm -hmm. So they expl plan to expand the functionality. Yeah. Towards, yeah, da, 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 da. yeah, yeah, this is planned. Yeah, we, we know there's a, so I, I guess it's linked to the model behaviors and how they work and, and things like this and how animations are, are done in there. So yes, we are, I thought there, were, there was already documentation on that in principle, but uh, we'll have to check if it's not uh, good enough. If, yeah. that's, if that's what they're meaning about uh, animations,
I don't know if you've got more detail in the chat or not. No, let's just jump around a little bit. Is there, is it, uh, Jane, do you want to read this? I'm sorry, I should not do this. <laughs> um, <laughs> quick question. De yeah, dev mode, it's hard to use with a game resolution, which isn't the native resolution of the output monitor. Are there plans to fix that? Um, I'm not sure I understood the question. Yeah, I'm not sure either. Okay, uh, if we could get clarification on that question, see if we can answer it. check I'm, I'm looking at the chat as we speak it's a bug render scale don't work with dev mode is that what, what you were um... double checking here oh we do have a good question here from raja which is uh, do we have any information on the visual docking guidance system mm, not yet i don't no, think so i don't mm. think you have yet okay no. that, that's to be, to be done. this is one of those things please put it on that on that yeah. new answer hub. We don't know enough about it. Like I honestly, I, as I said, I spent my entire morning looking at the feedback snapshot. I didn't see it. And we went, so what we do is we click on the, we click on the link and literally read through everything just to make mm -hmm. sure that we are fully in your headspace. And that one we just didn't get to. So I'll look for it, but we don't, we did not discuss it. So it's under, under discussed at this point on our side. says if the render scale is not set to 100 everything is misaligned uh, so the dev mode doesn't know about render scale okay okay i okay. think i i think i see the issue okay we'll have to check that mm, okay <laughs> it's um, a release date i just want it because i see it like constantly like <laughs> we don't know i mean i can tell you just a, the, the quickest of updates and that but we need to be careful because this is really an sdk meeting and we should treat it as such xbox port has been going awesome uh but we're, we're, we're smoothing the experience it's no longer really on the technical side where the, most of the work is it's on the experience side to make sure everything is really great uh and we're not going to release it before it's great mm -hmm. it's as simple as that so uh therefore you know as, as the team makes progress and as everybody's confidence goes to green, then then we'll talk about a release date. But before that, it's silly, right? We we are very proud of the quality of the sim, and I think hopefully you appreciate the quality of the sim, and we want to keep that. So rushing to market is not what we're doing. And so the the whole thing with the beta, it really just depends on what. When do we think it's even halfway good? So we need further input and broader input, and we're not quite there yet. Right. And we did ask, uh, when's the next dev Q and A? That'll be mid to to late May. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we just have a couple minutes left here. So I think hopefully we answered a lot of the questions you had. Um, here, let's just do one more here because uh, I'm seeing it in the chat. Can we talk just a little bit about the flight model and improvements to that for the SDK? Uh, yeah. So, um, well, uh, on specific topics regarding improvements, not exactly, but we've we've mm -hmm. heard a lot about mm -hmm. uh, people questioning the flight model, yeah. wanting to replace it uh, <clears throat> too. So at this stage, um, what we'd like to do is uh, really take your feedback mm -hmm. and uh, and improve the flight model as it is to make it as good as possible so that everyone is uh, is happy with it. Mm -hmm. So right now the SDK is not planning to let you override the yep. flight model and really the idea is to to improve it so that it, it reaches the status that we are all looking for yeah uh, also um if i may add a comment the our flight model uh, was developed with the help of actual pilots uh, so there is a real expertise here um mm. but we know it can be complicated to to fully exploit, and this is why we we will try to to give you more documentation about how to to really adapt the flight model instead of, like you said, uh, allowing you to to override. That's not where we we want to go for now. Um, we are we are confident with our the quality of our flight model today, mm -hmm. but we know it can be very complex. Um, and we we will specifically work on that on improvements on that. This being said, uh, if you have issues with the flight model, we will need the details on that. We will need to know exactly what's wrong and what are you trying to do so we can help 
and uh, give you guidance on how to how to go where you want with our flight model. So please feel free once again to ask your questions on the Q and A platform, um, which I remember I remind will be live uh, on the beginning of May, probably May the third, and it will be on the specific website. We don't know the the URL yet. Mm -hmm. Uh, but as soon as we know, we'll keep you posted in every every possible way. So yeah, on the on the flight model, we know we have uh, improvements to do mm -hmm. to make it easier to to understand. But we also need your feedback specifically on what's uh, what's complicated for you about the flight model. Certainly. All right, we are at time, so just want to thank Jorg, Elise, and Eric for coming on the show today to answer some questions. Uh, most likely, we'll do this again soon. Uh, yeah. But is there anything that anyone wants to say before we close out? I want to say thank you as always. I, I, and I mean it. I, I look, 500 people spending time with us is a lot more than I thought. So <laughs> like, uh, we, had, we had little bets going. How many people would actually show up? I, I lost. The bet. I lost badly. And Jane, <laughs> um, I mean, just keep the conversation going. I mean, I think the, the thing, we talked about the frequency of these. And, um, mm. and I think frequency to me has a lot to do with usefulness so i would say communicate how useful this was and how mm -hmm. frequent you would like these I, mean, I think monthly is probably the fastest we can and really should go given just that we actually the team needs to develop stuff um mm -hmm. but, but but there's nothing is set in stone so please just tell us and we'll listen and as always we'll be here yep absolutely i'm sure i'll get a post open on the forums to to collect some feedback from everyone. So chat, thank you so much for asking your questions and for participating in the stream today. Uh, we will see you soon and I hope everyone has a safe and happy weekend. All right, mm -hmm. bye everyone. Yeah. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you, bye. bye. bye.